Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone, and today's guests are music stars and cousins with a legendary pedigree. Nick Endicott Gibb was adopted at an early age, but in 2019, following a 10-year search to find his biological parents, Nick traced his birth mother and discovered that his father is Maurice Gibb of the Bee Gees, and this has been confirmed with DNA. Music has always been Nick's passion, and over the years he has written his own songs and produced, recorded, and performed with many top British artists and with his band, The Speak. His cousin is Deborah McLean, whose mother, Leslie, is the sister of Bee Gees Barry, Maurice, and Robin Gibb. Blessed with an expressive and versatile voice, she has spent many years as a vocalist and performer. After Nick and Deborah connected, they formed a music duo, Cousins Gibb. Their first single, a tribute to their legendary family roots, is a new reimagined version of the Bee Gees hit song, Tragedy. Their second single, which was released last Christmas, is a beautiful original song entitled Coming Home. They're working on a full-length album of original material scheduled for release later this year. I'm delighted to welcome Nick Endicott Gibb and Deborah McLean, better known as Cousins Gibb, to our show in their first North American interview. Nick and Deborah, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having us, Harvey. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. It's, yeah, really good to be here. Well, Nick, I'm going to start out with the obvious question that I'm sure everybody asks you, and that is, how did you discover that you're the biological son of Maurice Gibb? Well, I was adopted when I was yeah, very young, 18 months old, and brought up with a lovely family, and everything was fine, two sisters and a brother, in the lovely Ashdown Forest in Sussex in England. And all through my life, really, I wanted to know why I was so musical, why I was so creative, because uh, none of the family were. And it was it was hard, really, back then, because there was no Internet or anything to find these these answers. You had to send lots of forms off and, and, and that sort of thing. So when the Internet came along, I put out a message and just to look for my birth mother on this particular website. And two years later, I got an email back from her, which was quite shocking. So we we sort of hooked up. And after knowing her for a little while, she told me who uh, she said my father was. I found him, got to know him for two years, and then we decided to do a DNA test and he wasn't my father. So I go up to Scotland to meet my, uh, my auntie, her sister, to, to meet with some cousins as well I, I hadn't met before. And she asked me how th this guy was because we got to know each other for quite a while. And, and I, I had to tell her that, well, he, he's not my father. And she was quite shocked and said, well, to be honest, if he's not your father, I know who, who your father is because there was only a couple of people in her life at the time. And, he, you know, if it's not him, I know who it is. But, you know, she has to tell you, you know, I can't really tell you this. She has to tell you this. So, but she said, you get your voice from him. He, he was very success, successful. You should speak to, to her. So after talking to my birth mother, she basically just denied it all and said it was always the other guy. And I said, well, it can't be because we've done a, a test. She, she backed off from me, didn't really have a lot of communication with her. And then her sister called me a few weeks later and said, look, it's Morris Gibb uh, from the Bee Gees. Well, Nick, take us back to the day that you discovered that you're part of the Bee Gees family. How did you handle that news? Well, it, it, it was obviously quite a shock to, to begin with, to, to hear that, you know, I'm, my, my real father was someone so successful. But it also, at the same time, it made sense to me, really, because... I didn't really bond as, you know, as, as father and son with this other guy, at, like I thought I would do. It, it never really felt like the proper connection I thought I'd have, uh, which is a strange thing. You know, so that, that wasn't really there. But when, to, when I found out that it was someone, that it was Morris, it sort of made sense because I, I, his creativity, his passion, the, the, the things he was interested in and what he likes to do, the, the studio side of things, that's what I've always done and always like to be part of uh, it just all sort of made sense to me you know yes it is it, it was quite a a shock to, to hear it was Morris but it made sense at the same time. Deborah, you're the niece of Barry Gibb who is the only surviving Beachy what was his reaction to the news that he had a new nephew? I have no idea sorry 
<laughs> I, I don't know, honestly. That's that's a conversation he would have had with mum. I don't know. I didn't ask. Sorry. Yeah. Well, Deborah, take us back to the first time you met Nick, which I understand was online, not in person, correct? We connected after mum reached out to Nick. Mum had spoken to Nick and said to me, you know, you should get in touch with him. He, he is your cousin. And by the way, you've, you've both got so much in common. She said, I think you and Nick would really connect well. So I did. I reached out to Nick. Back then, I wasn't so tech savvy. I wasn't on Facebook a lot. So it was just a messenger message to Nick, just reached out. And then we, we did a Zoom call and the rest is history. We just got on straight away. So we got through a lot of the uh, little things in the family where he gets certain things from medical history. We went through quite a lot of that. And then we went on to the music. So, and we realised we were, we were very, very much alike. So, yeah. Am I correct that you still have not met in person? We have not met in person, no. No. Thanks to COVID. <laughs> well, that's going to be over soon, I really hope. Yeah, so, yeah. Nick, yeah. Have, you, have you had a conversation with Barry Gibb at all? No, I mean, I, I've spoken to Leslie, Debbie's mother, you know, which is, which is their elder sister, you know. And, I, I, you know, we've had you know, lots of messages. We've, we spoke for a good couple of hours on the phone when we first connected. But no, no, I haven't heard anything from that the other side of the family yet. It's it's yeah. W- whether I will or not, I don't know. But I, I hope I hope I do at some point. Are there other Gibb cousins that are in the music industry as well? There's uh well, there's Spencer who's a musician, and he's Robin's first son. That there's there's various there's music throughout the family, isn't there, Debbie? You know there, there's. Yeah. You know, a- a- Ashley and Stephen, which are Barry's sons. You know, Sam, my half sister, is 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 musical. It, it's it, and Adam, my half brother. It it's, okay. it runs through through the whole family, really. Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah, no, my, my brother is very musical as well. So he has a band, and yeah, they they're quite they're doing very very well. So it, it does go on. So this. There's only a couple of siblings that I have that that have not got a musical bone in their body, so we wouldn't even give them a tambourine to play because they just <laughs> not find the rhythm. So. Well, have <laughs> have you given any thought to collaborating with the other Gibb cousins? No, no, not at this stage. No, I've never done anything with the cousins. I mean, one, I am on the other side of the world, but. I've, I've never tr- chased fame or anything like that. I was just quite happy just to sing in Australia and earn my income. To me, that's success. I think there's enough BGs in the family. And it's something that, like I said, it, yeah, there's, they're megastars, really. They're megastars. What are you chasing? Because I, I don't think anyone in our family would ever get to that status. And no matter what you do, you're compared to that. I've done shows where I've done tribute shows and people have said, oh, can you do a BG song? And you're like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What's the point? That's that's always going to be your overshadowing you. So for me, it was, if I could get out there, it's something I love to do. I can earn a living from it. That's success. I think there's, there's, that really is successful. So Mm. If it takes you further, then so be it. But, yeah, I mean, to me, I, I live the dream that I'm able to do that. So, Well, Deborah, you have a very versatile singing voice. You've had a successful career in Australia singing in big band shows and tribute shows. What was it like to star in those shows compared to the work you're doing with Nick? Extremely different. Extremely different. So recording with Nick is very different for the simple fact that I get to be myself. I'm more relaxed and it, it's just me. I'm not being what someone else wants me to be or wants me to sound. So it's just me in the raw. And I actually had to learn how to do that again. So I was just so well trained in being something else or fitting in someone else's show. 
creating the sound they wanted. So I was to always told, you know, hold back the vibrato. Don't sound like that. Other times I was told, oh, you sound a little bit like Olivia Newton-John. Don't sound like that. And, yeah, and just having to bottle up me. So this time I get to be me. So And, and it's lovely because Nick and I find we blend really, really well with our voices too, which yeah. just seems to come naturally. So it's not hard. It's a lot easier working with Nick. Yeah, so it just flows. Well, I've listened to both songs and I can definitely attest that your voices do blend beautifully. It's yeah. so interesting. You've Thank had you. a successful career, Deborah, but you were stifling your own individuality and unique voice. And now we get to hear it. That's really great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So um, so how did yeah. the two of you come to the decision to form a musical duo? It came when Nick and I were toing and froing on everything that I'd done, that he had done. We were sending music files over and videos over and just, you know, how diverse we both were with what we were doing. So, and then Nick's style of music, I said, Do you, have you ever done anything softly or, or, you know, toned it down a bit? And he goes, oh, I actually did tragedy, but in a very different way. And he sent me what he had done. And I heard the very raw version, the original of very stripped back, just Nick singing tragedy as, a, as you hear it without me uh, and it was beautiful it was absolutely beautiful so and I, it gave me goosebumps and I just said wow you need to do something with that and he goes no it needs more and then he was like you know we should do this together we should see how it sounds together and that's pretty much how it, it came about so and we did it and it was haunting yeah well your first single tragedy was of course one of the Bee Gees biggest hits Nick, I understand that you chose that song because it resonates with you as a person living with rheumatoid arthritis. Is that right? Yeah, it's it, it, to find that I, I was diagnosed quite recently, really, in the last couple of years, around the same time I got the, the DNA confirmation. And it was, it, it's, it, I know that it's in the family, it's an hereditary thing and can quite commonly be a, an hereditary thing. So to get that information was a bit of, because I had no medical history, you see, all through my life. I didn't, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to pursue and find out, you know, answers to questions I had, not just about who I am as a person, my identity and my creativity, but also about medical, you know, any kind of medical issues that might come up and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it was, it was really, the words in, in tragedy, I, I find so beautiful and I, I wanted to bring them out, you know, and, and make them more poignant. Uh, and, and get them across a bit differently. And so the idea was to do a completely different version of that. And I thought it would be really nice if we could do that together as a, you know, do it like a, a, a you know, one of their hits uh, as, it's, as it's in the family to do together as, as cousins and, and to do a completely different version, more heartfelt, more emotive, you know, and get those words, those, those lyrics out, you know, a bit, a bit more poignantly. Well, your version of tragedy is almost unrecognizable from the original version because it has a slower tempo and a mellow, haunting quality. How did you arrive at that new tempo and arrangement? I think the idea was to, to try and I, I just thought I'd try and see if it worked, really, to, to try and to, to make it more of a ballad and, and see what happens. And I, I tried some various ideas on guitar and and piano and it it worked better as as a piano approach with, with approach, approaching it with the piano and definitely then strings so i got just a basic thing together to uh, and i tried various tempos and there was as soon as i hit the tempo that we're on i think it we're, we're like 90 beats per minute now i think it might even be less than that i'll have to check uh, but it it just it clicked it worked I thought this feels right so I just went with that and after sending it to Debbie she you know was immediately like yes we've got to we've got to do this this sounds great and it just it just went on from there and, and De Debbie added some vocals I then worked with those I it worked on the strings further and then it, it just sort of it came together as that sort of feel and it just really we both knew it worked right from right from you know as soon as we started to, to work further on it we knew it worked 
I, I totally agree. I love this version of it. I can't wait for people Thanks. in North America to hear it. Now, your second single, Coming Home, which was released last Christmas, is a beautiful ballad with a rich melody and warm harmonies. Tell us about the significance of that song to you. Well, that that came about from, you know, we've all been locked up for two years. We've all been a, not been able to see loved ones, not been able to connect with people that we usually connect with, especially over the festive uh, season, the holiday season. It was all about wanted to we wanted to really put something together to highlight that and and create something uh, beautiful that will help people perhaps connect with that feeling of not being able to see their loved ones and, and family at the time where they normally would do you know so I assume that you recorded tragedy and coming home separately in different countries without ever having been in the same <laughs> studio at the same time. What right. was that like? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, luckily, nowadays, you can do, you can do a lot you know, remotely. There, there's so much you can do with technology now. It, I mean, I, I, would, I would love to. I mean, we haven't even met yet as cousins. You know, we haven't even you know, been in the same room together. And it's been about a year and a half now, I think, uh, or more to, uh, since we first connected. So to work musically then yeah technology allows you to do that and I can send files to, to Debbie she can send files back to me I can carry on mixing here and and build things up you know there's various ways you can do that sort of thing now but it, it yeah the the actual being in a room creating or working together would would be so much nicer and so much better anyway because you, you know ideas I think work uh, you can come up with ideas together in the same room and and, and the energy is different, you know. We can, we can do what we've, what we've been able to do, you know. Nick, do you sing differently with Debbie than you did with your band? It, it's funny because with, with my band, it was, uh, uh, when I started that project, it was all about my love of the 60s, my, my love of, of that particular time of music. Oh. I love all of that sort of the the Kinks, the Beatles, the the, the Who, and psychedelic stuff. You know, I, I love all of that. And, and the idea with that project was to, you know, sort of write material with that sort of feel and 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 be that sort of band because of my link with my birth mother used to work in the industry with uh, Sir George Martin, so she knew the Beatles. She used to work at a, a, a club called the speakeasy which everyone referred to as the speak so i called the band the speak so it was really a it was after meeting my birth, birth mother and i wanted to get lots of ideas and and things going around in my head out in songs to do with that kind of feel and the 60s sort of thing so singing in in the band was very much uh it, it was it had rocky elements to it so it was a much more of a, a rocky voice i'd say and a slightly different voice than than I would do on, on other stuff. I've, I've done ballads, I've written ballads and ambient chill out sort of tracks and funky tracks and other sorts of things, uh, you know, which aren't anything to do with the band, just ideas and things, you know, I, whatever I, I feel, you know, I'm not really into any particular genre and that's all I do. I like lots of, if music, it sounds good, it, it sounds good, you know, and, and if I like, you know, I feel like that sort of thing, then I'll, then I'll, I'll you know, have a go at some things like that. So with Debbie, it's, I'm finding it a bit really like what she said. It, it's I, I'm now singing in my own voice, which I have a natural been, voice. Yeah. If for so long I've been been with the band and writing in that sort of way. It's such a breath of fresh air to be able to sing with my own voice. Just sing. I've, I've had ideas with my own voice, but never really played them to people because I've, it, it's it, it's sort of more revealing. It's more you know, you're, you're sort of your showing yourself up a little bit more than you would to you can sort of hide behind a voice in a rock band a, a, a bit differently so this is really open it's really from the heart it's it's truth it's just who it, it my the, the way i'm singing now is who i am the way debbie's singing is who she is and i think that's why it works so well as well we're both singing in our own voices we're both being who we who we are not anything else anymore well, it's called authenticity, and that's yeah. what comes through <laughs> for both of you. Brilliant. I find it so Thank interesting. You for that. <laughs> I, I, I find it so interesting because Deborah was singing 
in shows where she was very much being controlled by whatever image she was told to project. And you yeah. were doing your tribute as well to the 60s. And now finally, you're being your own yeah. authentic selves. Of course, yeah. the big question is, Nick, you're in England. Deborah, you're in Australia. When will the two of you be physically together so you can perform together and record more music? Well, well if, if we... Yeah, yeah, go on, Deb. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, say, I would like to say, hopefully, end of this year, early next year, uh, we're, we're, we're about to have another COVID outbreak and they're chopping and changing rules at the moment. So our, um, we're expected to have our numbers triple again in three weeks. So they're talking face masks and restrictions again and again, yeah. no music, you know, no singing, no dancing. So here we go again because we're coming oh, into yeah. our winter. So I don't know if that will impact on border security or travel. We don't know. So I don't want to go locking anything in to have the plans changed again. Yeah, I think tentatively end of the year, early next year. So is where I'm thinking. Nick? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you I think, the same yeah it's, a, it's the same. It, yeah. Basically, whenever we can, we, we, we've been dying to meet anyway since yeah. we connected. But we haven't been able to. So soon as soon as it's logistically possible, uh, and everything's calmed down a bit, I, it, we'll we'll be jumping at it. And you know, it, even if it's just to meet to start off with, you know, let alone you know planning any any kind of performing. But we're 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 really busy getting stuff together now. More, more yeah. songs in the pipeline. So we're busy working on that side of things uh, anyway at the moment. So as soon as we've got all that sorted out for the album and. Uh, you know, we'd be thinking shows and that sort of side of it afterwards. So, yeah, it won't, it won't be just yet. But if, if everything's changed now, right now, then I think I'll be on a plane tonight. <laughs> it would be, you know, well, for me, it's the morning. It's, for, it's, it's the evening for you, Deb, at the moment, isn't it's it? It's evening here, yes. But, yeah, but I'll be, I'll be on, a, on the next plane, that, you know, if, 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 if possible, definitely. Are you going to be collaborating as songwriters as well as performers? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's that's the plan. I mean, you know, the first track tragedy was really us connecting and, you know, doing something in homage to the family. But the idea is to carry on with original material right together. And yeah, just get just really there's no rules. We've decided there's not going to be any any rules really with what we're doing. We're not going to be doing, you know, it's not going to all be sounding like our first original track it's not all going to be sounding like coming home we're going to be doing anything that we feel it is that we that we'd like to do together it could be a rock, a rock track it could be a, a a funky track it could be a folk whatever we're just going to really just go with the flow and and do what we feel and not not put any any restrictions on anything so when do you expect to release a full album of original material uh, when we've got a full album of original material together, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're working the... on we're working on stuff now. So, and I can say it's quite diverse from one song to the next. Very, yeah. very diverse. So, yeah. I've been due to COVID able to set up a studio at home. So, and I'm on the same programs as Nick as well, just to help with what we're doing. So, yeah. And, learn very, very quickly how to use my programs. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that's helped us out a lot too. So we've, we're able to work together that way. So it's, it's been good. Yeah. I'd say we're probably halfway towards, you know, uh, uh, the amount of songs working on at the moment. Uh, we're about halfway there with uh, some, you know, a couple or so nearly finished and another sort of five uh, possibly of ideas, which, won't be too long in, in, in you know, to, to sort out and to, to, to finish off. So, yeah, we're about, about sort of halfway with ideas and some songs already at the moment. Do you think at some point you will ever consider approaching your uncle Barry Gibb and collaborating with him? I, I think that's that's something that we'll see how, how what, you know, time will tell. You know, if, if, if it's meant to be, it, it, it will be. The, the, the important thing for me is I've, I've I've found answers to questions. I've, I've, I've got a conclusion to my journey. It's been a long journey. You know, I've got my identity now. I know why I am the way I am in a lot of respects. So for me, I just want to create some, some good music with Debbie. And 
if there's a connection with other members of the family that comes along, then, then that'd be lovely. But it, it, what will be, will be, I think. So what's been the reaction from the BG fans to your recording of Tragedy? Well, it's, it's been pretty positive, actually. It's, the, it, it's generally been a bit of a breath of fresh air for a lot, a lot of fans. Some, uh, you know, don't really, aren't sure what to make of it. But generally speaking, it's been, um, you know, wow, it's uh, it, it, just unexpected, you know, because it, it is unexpected. If you, you know, when you hear it, it's, it's, if you're expecting to hear tragedy, you're, you, you won't hear tragedy <laughs> you, you know it's not it's not gonna you, right from the from the start it, it you you know it's it's completely different so it's you know it's been when it when you know a song so well and it is such a, a well-known song I don't think there's been so many different versions of of, of it and covers of, of the song but not not really done in a completely different way that, that we had so it, you know, have an open mind with it. It, it. It's we're really proud of it. We're really proud of how it's come together and 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 how what what the type of version we've done really works. Lovely. We're, we're really pleased with it. Have an open mind with it and yeah, treat it just just listen to it as as a different song. Really, not 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 any comparisons with the original because it isn't like the original at all. And it it has been really well received though. The response has been quite lovely actually. So. And in saying that, a lot of people like are discovering Nick, but at the same time are discovering me because they didn't even realise that the BGs had an older sister. So, and the question still keeps popping up going, who's Leslie? Who is this <laughs> Leslie? Yeah, it's their sister. So, um, so yeah, I think I was just as much of a surprise as you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, Nick, as you know, Maurice Gibb passed away in 2003, but you didn't find out you were his son until 2019. If you could have met him, what would you have said to him? I think it's one of those things that if he was alive when I found out from from what I what I uh, hear, he would have he would have been open arms. He would have been, you know, wanting to connect with me and. We, we would we would have met up and we would have uh, you know been in each other's lives just as as any normal I, I hopefully you you would think anyway when you find your I don't know what it's like for other people that find their their birth parents you know there are some some good stories there's some some bad stories but you know from what I hear what sort of person he was he would have accepted me and we, we would have had a, 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 some form of relationship. And, it, uh, you know, that sort of thing. You know, I don't know because, you know, it didn't happen, but it would have been lovely to meet him. It would have been lovely to know him, of course. So where can our viewers and listeners access your music? Well, it's available on uh, all the digital platforms, you know, the Apple Music, uh, Amazon, YouTube, iTunes, Deezer, that, 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 you know, it's, it's available everywhere. But also we've got a, a Facebook page you can go to for, to, for updates and, and info, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Cousins Give Official. Cousins Give Official. I understand you also have a website in production? Yeah, it's being worked on at the moment. So that will be, be up and running hopefully soon. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming together. <laughs> I hope you'll put the link to this interview on that website. I would be so honored. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nick, I'm so happy that your connection to your family has been so positive and personally, professionally rewarding. I want to tell you that I have a strong feeling that your father, Maurice, is smiling down on you with great love and great pride. I can feel it. I, I, me too. And, 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 and his brother and Robin, I think they, you know, I, we, we, I'm sure Debbie still, you know, it feels it, the whole family feels connected to them still. And Andy, you know, it, it's 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 been such a loss for, for the family. But I, I believe that they are around us. I believe all your loved ones are still around around you and in, in your lives that you can you can talk to them, you know, and feel them feel their presence. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that strongly.
And Deborah, it's wonderful to see you evolving from the very structured shows that you've been doing and moving into your own artistry in your collaboration with Nick. I wish you both the best of luck. I thank you both so much for taking the time to appear on our show. Oh, thanks, thank Harvey. You, thank Harvey. you so much. Yeah, yeah thanks, thank thanks for having us. Yeah, it's been, it's been great um, being on, Harvey. Thanks so much. Our guests have been music stars Nick Endicott Gibb and Deborah McLean, better known as Cousins Gibb. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to our producer, Steve Silver. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.